<laughs> Folks, Tuesday night, welcome aboard. Murder Hobo Inc. presents Between the Rolls. Uh, thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, hang on. Uh, if you've been here before, you know how this is. We're going to go ahead and do a couple recaps. And we're going to go ahead and move on to our main topic tonight. Uh, peasants and other forms of gentry. Uh, why are they important and what are you going to use them for? Uh, but first, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. Uh, if you want to buy our cool crap, like phone case, shower curtain, uh, throw oh. a pillow, etc., check that out. If you want to be on the talk show or on a one-shot every other Saturday, but not this Saturday, uh, I'm out of town, uh, hit us up, mhobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. We'll get you on there, uh, let you shoot the shit or play a game for two hours. Uh, if you're in the market for dice, and as gamers who's not in the market for dice, uh, go over to Twitter and hit up at Pirate Dog Dice for some custom dice. Hit them up, tell them what you want, see if they got the time to make it. Uh, and if you think that answer stinks, uh, try some Adventure Sense from oddfishgames.com. With over 60 cents, you will find something that appeals to your nature. Or just buy future sewers and give them away as gifts. Uh, <laughs> dump them in the uh, vents of a car or something like that. Oh. Uh, oddfishgames.com also makes the shine system. So if you want to write gooder than me, check them out. And they are still working on getting the Kickstarter fulfilled. So uh, if you supported it like I did, uh, just be patient. They'll get it to you. Uh, folks, this is Between the Rolls. Let us introduce you to the people who are going to be chatting besides me. Uh, we'll start uh, on the top row from my screen. Carol. Carol, who are you and who are you? Who am I? Yeah. Well, as you said, I'm Carol. Hi, everyone. I'm Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and uh, commission mini painter who has her own Twitch stream under Muses underscore touch. Uh, let's see. And I play... Uh, Anja and the Craig campaign, and I show up on here and then occasionally on one shots and love it. There you go. That's what we were waiting to hear. That's the spirit. And, um, and, I'm Ro and I'm Rosa, who who knows, has been dragged back into cacophony. Uh, next up is David. <laughs> David is experiencing some kind of STD in his mouth tonight, I believe. Oh, That's wow. what I heard. <laughs> Uh, David, who are you and what's wrong with your mouth? That's what everybody Thanks, wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. if you must know, I scalded my mouth on my cheese grits today. So there you go. <laughs> sure, we'll go with that answer. Hey. What the hell the else truth. would it be? I mean... I mean, it's stranger than fiction. I mean, grits made out of polenta, it holds heat and just... Blah. So anyway... Hi, I'm David. No, I don't have an STD. <laughs> that you and know of. Welcome to. <laughs> I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, <coughs> hi, I play uh, Zadar on the Cacophony Show, and and I am also Ingve on the Calamity Campaign and Crow on the Calamity B side. Uh, you can. Uh, find me here uh, most Tuesdays on Between the Rolls and um, yeah um, one shots every once in a while so and uh, that's it and I'm usually Frank's whipping boy when it comes to shit like this so uh, don't sell yourself so positive I whip everybody easy. he does <laughs> I was gonna say I mean I you know when I was in his game, I would definitely say Taryn was the whipping girl of that campaign. Uh -uh. A lot of whining. Uh, tonight, no folks, whining. we're going to go ahead and talk about the two offerings we had last week. Margu is on hiatus uh, for a few weeks. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about peasants and other citizens in the RPG world. So let's go ahead and start off with Carol. She is part of the Cred campaign. Hey. And I have... Uh, let's see, that's uh, episode 305. Carol, tell us a little bit about Cred. Cred, okay, so what the hell happened this week? <laughs> now, I actually pretty much remember. Um, we were, we were basically exploring uh, these lava tubes, trying to find a couple of missing town folks, which are most likely dead at this point, but we still want to find them. 
Uh, and we we had just finished a long rest in a protected spot in these lava tubes. Uh, this beautiful cavern uh, had a waterfall in it and uh, a, a glowing blue uh, body of water that actually, when you went in it and went into the waterfall, it would calm your mind, uh, taking away a few points of dread. Uh, but we get up. Uh, my character feels like shit because she's got some. She's got a disease. Yippee! And she's also yeah. Got an insanity. There you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, my dice have not been kind to me in it. Hey, Although it was a long they were much to that island, <laughs> Carol. They so. were they were much kinder to me this week because this week it was Brand Dice who totally failed him multiple times. Uh, so we, we, I don't remember what actually happened. Um, we basically found another way out that would end up being a shortcut, uh, to where we need to go. And we ended up coming into this room that was full of bones, like thousands and thousands of people's, not just bones, people's worth of bones in that room. And that was where my one time my dice failed me. And I did, did I'm friggin', I just suffered another point of drip, but so didn't brand. Uh, so we went through there and, um, and what do we, let's see, I'm trying to remember what was in there. Uh, there was the fly, there were basically some large flies and we easily took those out and we ignored a couple others. We got in, we got into this, we found a, a door. We opened the door. It's actually like a throne room of, for one of the clans of ghouls. Oh shit, I'm gonna forget the name. I wanna say it's Yogash, Clan Yogash. Uh, and their leader was on a throne and they had other people who were working in there, um, putting up skeletal parts and things, repurposing them. And we got to talk to her about, you know, about gee, something weird's going on with the zombies and, and things that they're, they're eating for, for basically the zombies, and, not zombies, the ghouls, not zombies. The ghouls in this game are not, you know, Cthulhu ghouls are not like your normal ghouls you find in D&D. These are intelligent, they have charisma, they, they are almost like dealing with real people. They can be just as big a dicks though, like she was. She was a terrible, oh, I wanted to freaking kill her, but I figured that was a bad idea <laughs> to try to take her on. Oh. I know Bran wanted to kill her uh, because basically, she, oh, we were all asked to submit a couple historical figures and they all ended up as body parts and things in this chamber, except for one of Bran's suggestions. Basically, uh, she was a living saint. Hi, Kyle. Kyle's in chat. I'm t Kyle can tell me if I'm getting this wrong. Uh, it was your gosh, right? <laughs> um, not at all. <laughs> Shoot. So uh, basically, she we, we talked to her for a bit. It was a big info dump. And poor Ernie ended up getting knocked off. So he's going to be sad panda because he missed a whole fuck ton of info. What? What the hell was the name of the damn clan, Kyle? Yeah, it's Yogash. I was right. Yogash was a character in Willow. That's bullshit. <laughs> well, I wonder, I don't know, because this is a pre-published scenario. I don't know if this is something he made up or if it was in the scenario. He's actually doing a really good job of blending what we bring to the table with what the scenario is and putting his own stuff in. Uh, I don't really know where one begins and the other ends. So, but anyways, to get to the interesting bit of this whole encounter, uh, basically Wait. she said, I had to shut up. Basically she wanted us to see her latest acquisition. I think most specifically Bran. Not till you find out what he did when you two weren't looking. But who the hell are you talking about, Bran? Because Bran went a little nuts. 
Anyways, brand you know, it's like nuts. going to the convenience store and having somebody on their phone in front of you talking about shit. That's what well, and he's like. in chat. He's That's actually like. writing on chat. Maybe if you were watching your own damn show, you know, you know what he's saying. I'm participating in my show. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we're here. <laughs> I'm interacting with the with the with the fans, and actually, it's relevant to uh, what I'm talking about here. <laughs> okay, so anyways. Uh, but basically, uh, she wanted probably Bran to see her latest acquisition, which was the uh, living saint of his church, which is the Raven Queen. Uh, and she was now undead. <laughs> so she's no longer the living saint of his, of his uh, church. So she went up and she he, actually he went up and he he killed her. He like killed her, killed her um, gently. I thought, how do you kill someone gently? But okay, whatever. Uh, and the last thing he saw as he started to leave was her taking a big piece of skin off her face to start eating it. Oh, we did find out about the library too. They have a library, but their library is basically a larder full of people because they get information from the memories of the people who they eat. So it's kind of creepy, but it, it works from a story point of view. And his, that's, I believe is the point anyways, where his mind just snapped and he has developed a, see, I can't really say it's an irrational hatred of ghouls. I think he's well within his rights to hate them right now, but that's essentially what it is. If he runs into another ghoul, he's going to just murder uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's basically the cliff notes. If you really want to see what happened. No, I didn't mention, no, Kyle, I did not mention the Udu crime of goblins. All right. If, if they, there's a whole big info dump, watch the episode if you want to see it. And, uh, that was the interesting shit that happened in that episode. It was a fun episode. It, although it was a little weird that unfortunately Ernie dropped out and our, our guide, unfortunately, he couldn't make it that night. But it was it, it was interesting having only two of us to play. But it was good role playing. I actually got up to got into you know Brand's face and demanded to know if he was okay. You know, and, I was uh, hoping he'd fireball your ass. He's a monk. He doesn't have fireball. So glory of blows. <laughs> <laughs> That is the cred campaign, and that was cred number 20. So uh, they're, they're moving along, but you can still catch up pretty quickly. Uh, next up was 306, I believe, and that is Calamity. It was the B-side, the boys and girl from Toad Town. David, tell us about Calamity B. What can I say about Calamity B is that we're a bunch of idiots. So, yeah, the... The boys and girls from Toe Town, yeah, just uh, made a muck of everything. So, a muck, <laughs> yeah, a muck, a muck, a muck, a pretty muck. much. <laughs> uh, we pick up where we left off, where uh, we had just uh, uh, intercepted, uh, uh, I want to say, like a small squad of bugbears, and we had previously gotten uh, a missive off of them uh, informing us that there would be uh, an invasion of sorts on the town of Zito, I believe is that the name of it, Frank? Yep. I call it yeah. Zeto, you call it Zito. Let's sort the Tomato, whole thing tomato. Out. That's yep. right. So, uh, so, yeah, so we speak to the <coughs> elder of the town that we're in and... Um, yeah, we volunteer to go and uh, deliver this missive to Zeto. <laughs> or Zito. Or Zito. Yeah. Hey, Zito. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, we volunteer for that. So they set us up with provisions. They give us an ox and a cart, which we're completely happy about. <laughs> and, of course, <coughs> this is uh, Frank's campaign. So, yeah. Uh, just dire things happen to the ox. <laughs> so you don't know that. No, you're not, you're no. Not, I have rolled. 
The dice yeah. have spoken. I didn't say I didn't, I didn't say it was dead or anything like that. I just said <laughs> dire things happen. So so anyway, yeah. we make it uh to the uh to the bank of uh, a tributary that leads into a, a lake. And within this lake, we see this floating city of uh just uh buildings and bridges and vessels and um that seem to be centered around uh as we try to ford our way across the river to make our way to the lake <laughs> um we come to find out that this place is massive. Uh, we we fashion we find a small raft and we fashion a raft out of the cart that we have. <laughs> I go to knocking the wheels off the cart. So uh, unfortunately, we had to leave our rocks behind. Just so, so as we leave the shore and we're pedaling our way to Zito, uh, yeah, we we just hear the loud moans of the oxen. <laughs> back there what its fate was we don't know uh shortly after we heard the moaning stop we get pelted by a shower of arrows uh coming towards us as we're uh making our way to zito so anyway we get there we uh meet with the their elders they they let us in surprisingly and uh we are greeted by their emissary simon Lebon. So, and for some reason, Crindor was just in a mood. You know, we later kind of sussed it out that, you know, Crindor's <coughs> had a UTI or something like that. So it was pretty bad. Lot, anyway, lot she ended up, murder hobo. <laughs> anyway, she wanted to, to throat punch everybody and, yeah, almost got us isn't, either killed or thrown in a brig or anything like wait. that. So. Isn't hmm. that her thing these days? She wants to throw punch everybody on everything she's on now. Last couple episodes. Oh, wait, yeah. uh, I was going to say, I think you get muted there. Oh, no, wait, never mind. Hold, hold on. I'm being told that she wants to throw punch you now. So, yeah, she okay. probably does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> throw punching. I, I, oh, my God. I laugh. I do laugh when yeah, she's like, oh, I throw punch everybody. Carrie's a riot. So, yeah. She, she was is. In a mood she's a lot when, of fun to play with. And the boys uh, just kind of, we kind of just write it off as, you know, she's got this really bad UTI and all that. And, you know, she's been holding it in. But we also kind of surmised that it was down. Crandor lack of sex i guess or something like that so we idiots came up with uh, just all kinds of theories about it and we devoted <laughs> uh, almost a half an hour of the show trying to suss that out so anyway it's a great episode uh it kind of leaves with it with us there talking to their elders and all that we have theories the 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 lake itself uh the the depth of the lake is uh, actually dwindling. We're thinking that the rivers have forded off or whatever. So we're volunteering to go explore that and find out what the cause is. So anyway, that'll be the next episode on Calamity B. And Calamity B will be front and center because uh, some of the members of Calamity A uh, are quite busy these days. So we will be doing B a little bit more. Although I think we might lose two members uh, here in a week or two, so we shall see. Folks, uh, we only had two episodes to choose from, and those were it, uh, Cred and Calamity. You can catch up on them on our audio-only podcast over on Podbean, or if you want to see The Moneymakers, uh, our YouTube archive has all, all of our freaking shows. Uh, it does? Yeah. three hundred. Nope. They were dro- I thought they were dropping off. <clears throat> they were dropping off, but now they are all back. So yeah, <gasps> 306 episodes of that and 140 by tomorrow, 141 of the Between the Rolls. So, oh, I'm so uh, happy to hear that. Actually. I think we're past Bonanza headed towards Gunsmoke. <laughs> uh, friends and everybody else are in the wayside. Simpsons are going to be a little bit hard to catch up, but those fuckers are only a half hour. So, you know, factor in the time anyway uh you know how this goes if you've seen this before if you don't uh we're going to shoot the shit about a random topic tonight's topic is peasants and other members of the community that are not 
adventuring stock. We're talking the plebeians, the regular Joes, uh, because A, they provide depth and character color to your campaign. So you young DMs, uh, it can't all be hack and slash and some RP. You got to have some background here. That's where lore and history and Joe Schmo come in. So tonight we're going to go ahead and discuss that. Uh, I am a little bit behind on my outline. Work has been somewhat busy. Uh, I have instructed these guys to come up with two NPCs each. Uh, I have also come up with two NPCs. We're going to go ahead and talk about them <clears throat> and how they are built and why, most importantly, why are they built. Uh, some of these NPCs should be a source of information, some of it reliable, some of it not so much. Uh, and I'm curious as to whether these guys came up with anybody who would be a reoccurring NPC. Uh, as David's pointed out, Mortimer J. Sneed uh, just chimes in frequently, uh, and he's, he's kind of a favorite of ours. Uh, but we've got a lot of repeat NPCs, including Rosa, who died. Uh, hey! Not yet. That's that's coming soon. Bring maybe, it. I told maybe, you. Maybe Thursday. Rosa, I need I need to come back a player, <laughs> man. I need to come back a player for this. So, uh, since all three of us are DMs, let's go ahead and start the question and answer period. So we'll start with Carol. Uh, <laughs> so, in your campaigns, how often do you like to utilize regular Joe Shit the Ragman NPCs, and why? David, same question here. Oh, God, it's been a okay. while since I ran a campaign. It's been oh, a I, while. I, it's been a while. Uh, I, I do like to, actually, for the most important thing you said there, to add color and interest in, and uh, atmosphere, I do like to use them. And, of course, as a source of info, as a source of um, exposition. Um. So yeah, I don't, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been a long time since I ran a, like a full-fledged campaign, but I did have a lot of interesting characters in there to help lead, you know, help lead the PCs, set the PCs going in the right direction, I guess you could say. But I do like to have that rant, that tavern with a bunch of characters sitting around in it too, that it, they're just characters and they're just there for, for interest more than anything else. So you're so. pro NPC. Yeah. Very good. David, same question. Maybe same answer. Maybe different. Uh, I'm I'm definitely pro uh, NPC because it kind of, I mean, you're our GM. I mean, it's a great way for the GM to actually kind of play in the game by playing the NPC. And it's, um, you know, it's a lot of fun. And uh, characters that you create, I mean, your players, I mean, you know, they can fall in love with your characters. I mean, you know, a uh, couple of the, the campaigns that I ran, I mean, <coughs> the kids could not get enough of this one particular character. So, because um, it took, because the way that I use the character is that they're facilitators. Uh, basically, if there's something, uh, if there was information to be given, uh, items to be procured, or anything like that, they were the facilitators of that. They either relayed information, provided things that they would need for the adventure. And yeah, so I just got real colorful with the way that we're doing it. We're doing an un underdark campaign and uh, yeah, I just created this really outlandish character that could pretty much provide anything, so. Okay, now since all three of us are pro NPC, I've already pointed out more of J. Sneed. I can oh, go on God. with a bunch of the others, Lord Bushmill, etc. Fuck that Car guy. Carol. <laughs> Sorry. That was Taryn that suddenly. Uh so Carol, how often do you like to go ahead and bring these guys in, or do you just like to make them uh, exclusive appearances? Usually mine are more exclusive. It's when they're needed, you know. Um, well, like actually I think the bit, the main campaign or well, I, I pretty much I think I've only won, a, I've run like about two campaigns. I've run a lot of one shots. 
And um, I think the main, main campaign, they did a lot of traveling around, so they couldn't really, you know, the, P, the NPCs would tend to stay put and they would move on. So, um, so I didn't really have a chance to keep bringing them back in, but I mean, but, at, but I will say this, I mean, I've seen it, obviously, obviously I watched Critical Role and he has a lot of recurring NPCs too that, that come back and they become as big of favorites as the characters are. Uh, and I do like it. I think it's, it's, a, it's, I, I really enjoy having that NPC that does recur. So if I do ever have a campaign that really kind of stays put in one place and it goes on longer, the last campaign I ran wasn't a really long campaign. So, uh, but I would absolutely, um, hello, Taryn is a, an NPC in my own world. So She's definitely a, cam a character that recurs a lot. And she did in that too, come to think of it. So, cause it did sort of stay put in that city. David, what do you think? Um, I mean, I, yeah, I, the, the NPCs that I use, I mean, are su such a integral part of the campaigns that I've had because Oh, kids like to do a lot of RP and they love <laughs> vices, man, gambling, drinking or whatever. And oh. the, my NPC just facilitated that. Anything yeah. to make them feel like adults, right? Pretty much. Yeah. And they got creative. I mean, nothing got out of hand, but. I no mean, brothel, we did, right? <laughs> we did have a brothel, but we didn't RP With a bunch out. of kids? We didn't, know, hey, they came up with that. And I was like, okay, there's a brothel. So. What are their parents? I'm just kidding. And, and their parents that's knew. why <laughs> David can't be around kids anymore. No, no, it wasn't like that. So, no. No, the previous, the previous DM had brought it up and brought it into the game. So I just carried it over. But I, I downplayed the hell out of it. It was just like, there was so much other stuff going on. They, it for them, it was just, you know, something to give all about, you know, so. But so how, uh, how, how often were they around? Uh, they <coughs> were around quite a bit, quite a bit. But uh, it didn't detract from the adventure, though. I mean, the adventure was the adventure. So the, the NPC was always at the start uh, and was always there for their downtime, uh, yeah. essentially. It was for their downside, downtime. It was also for an info dump, too. So, <laughs> excuse me. Now, Carol brought up an interesting point. Uh, they traveled a lot in her campaign. Yeah. Uh, how do you get around that? Now, uh, I'll go ahead and pipe in my two cents on this one. With the Margu campaign on Sunday, initially I had them meet a caravan master, and he was the info dump with, well, we've got a problem over in this nation, we've got a problem over in this nation, we've got this nation. They'd make the choice, they'd go, they solve a problem. Lo and behold, uh, Caravan Master reappears because, hey, he's making the circuit. He heard this, he heard this, he heard this, he heard this. So, uh, Carol, I would, I would say for those far-reaching campaigns, uh, I love using the Caravan Master because th there's no question, uh, well, why is he here? Well, he's a fucking businessman is why he's here. Now, he hasn't made an appearance in a while. Uh, when the A-side Margu campaign starts, he is going to reappear in the strangest fashion, assuming they haven't all been killed off, uh, which is always uh, kind of a You risk. haven't TPK'd them yet? I mean, come on, Frank, you're slacking. They, uh, their roles have been astonishing. Well, astonishingly well. They are nothing like the cred campaign. Oh God, yeah. I mean, you guys hey, average six. <laughs> did you actually? Did you actually take a toll? Now, mine. Was oh, I don't watch good. the cred campaign. That thing's a piece of crap. Cheerful it's like a dumpster shit. fire. <laughs> you watch it every friggin' time in your living room. Now, how about this one? Uh, That's a good point. I don't think I've done it. I'll have to consider it while you guys answer this. When do you kill off a non-adventuring NPC? And do I've you? Done. I've never done it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it may, I'll tell you what, depending on how much you work them in, so that they're like a buddy 
of, of you know they're good friends with the group i mean that can make a big impact uh i i also tend to you know it's like the, the as i mentioned i have the group that moves around and i i said i like my campaigns to feel organic i don't like to force anything in there so that's why you know i didn't i just had different townspeople show up in different towns um but a caravan master that is actually a good plan uh what, I mean, yeah, if it, if it suited the plot well and it, it worked, yeah, absolutely, I would kill something off. I would kill off an NPC. All right, David, what about you? Yeah, actually, actually, Kyle brought up a great point. This is cred related, and this is definitely related to the question. We, it happened in cred, if you think about it. The entire ship's crew, other than the captain the first mate, were all killed off by the ghouls. So, yeah, but nobody and, liked them. So, well, no, I yeah, mean, I was them. pretty. Uh, Anja was definitely upset by this. So, that was that was that was you know that hit me and that hit me as pl- even the player in the gut. So, you know, but your GM is Kyle. Come on, he it doesn't like the matter. Ultimate, I, the ultimate murder hobo. When it's I like, when come I on. when I play. <laughs> But when I play, I mean, it's, you know, the GM, but I try to get into character and I try to get into their head. So mm-hmm. whether Kyle's the GM, that's not what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking about these are people she traveled with to this island and she got along with them. She liked them and they're all dead. So, yeah, it can make a big impact, you know, with your players if you want that sort of impact. David, what do you think? Kill them I've or no? never. I've never really killed an NPC, but I've had like uh, one taken out by being thrown in jail temporarily, you know, so that so he wouldn't be a crutch to the players uh, for for that leg of the adventure. So uh, basically that I that I had it, like I said. (laughs) The casino owner, which the Bordello, it was more like the Moulin Rouge, so it was more of a dance show than anything. So, mm-hmm. but uh, anything anyway, there was a religious right that showed up and wanted the casino shut down. So I facilitated that out, and that took the NPC out of the game for a while. So nice. he didn't just change venues, call it something else. Oh, he. He he bribed somebody. He got that. So <laughs> the, I, the the kids ended up <laughs> the cleric and the paladin. So now on the other hand, if I had you now, if on the other hand, uh, you know, we ever get back to the first campaign and I can do it, I want to kill off one of your NPCs. So I want to take out I want to take out fucking Bushbell. <laughs> Yeah, your your, your party members tried that once and it didn't work out so well. And wait, wait, they did? When did they try to take out Bushville? Uh, oh, they when did. They were didn't at they? Torgal Manor. <gasps> they tried to kill him? Oh, they did they try shot to... him with a lightning bolt. Oh god, that's right. And, they uh, did. He's kicked him in the face. Uh, but funny you should mention that. In the first campaign, <laughs> aside from the human torches, which weren't really NPCs oh. that I used. Uh, that's the I, worst thing you ever created in a game that's the worst thing i've ever come no, up in not. a game <laughs> that, is that not, was actually <laughs> I, I, I would say sprite uh because when the party got separated sprite went with uh your character carol but that wasn't oh sprite Oh my god! I was I wasn't even thinking of the freaking soft drink because that's what you named her after. That had to be a long. Time I was thinking Sprite, I like you know us. <laughs> I was just thinking us Sprite. No, you're right, Sprite. Yeah. What? Oh god. Uh, what? Were, sorry. What were you saying about Sprite? Uh, she she was actually traveling right. with you. Yep. Oh, you scared. <clears throat> Tell you what, that was scary that she died of the friggin' plague because I was like, going, great. When am I gonna catch it? I traveled with her." <laughs> You never had actually of all the things you did to Tara, and that was not one of them. She did never. You never had her get sick. So uh, I was like, truth be told, I was rolling behind the scenes for each <gasps> one of you. Oh, <laughs> did we? We all. You, you never. All passed. We all passed. All passed. Uh, there were three Jesus. times specifically uh, where I rolled for you guys. Oh and, my god! Uh, each one of you had when you guys were separated. Especially Manise, I really thought being married and having his wife die 
and his kid die, I really thought the rules would be with me. But he's he I didn't think, catch he, it. You think you rolled like a 19 or something. Wow. So there there were three times specifically. Uh once in Fink, once when you guys were separated, and then once when you went down to the uh barricaded town. Uh but the roles were with you that day because none of the four of you ever contracted the plague. Uh, because I had an entirely separate uh, kind of a, a one shot or an off shot for you. Oh shit, I have the plague. Go to the library, find the answer, and go get the antidote. Well, now we can go to the library anyways to get her find her plans for a friggin' prosthetic leg. <laughs> Still want to play that, Kyle? He's in chat. I'm pretty sure I burned that library down. Uh, no, so, I, wait, isn't that the library that uh, Cacophony is going to? Is uh, that that library? No. Well, that is the grand library, but uh, or the <laughs> great library. Uh, okay, so let, let's move track. And, I, you know, I said these were going to be Sorry. not adventuring, but I, I do have a question because I don't sure. really utilize them that often. Let's talk higher lanes. Not henchmen, hirelings. We're talking porters, we're talking uh, camp followers, things of that nature. Uh, again, I do not use them at yeah. all. It, I, I, can't, I can't remember at any time where it was even offered. So in your campaign, in your time plane, yay or nay on hirelings, starting with Carol again. Nah, too much paperwork, too many... Too many things to keep track of. I, I I like, you know, if I'm running, I just want to keep track of my things. I don't want to have to. Now, I also want to add, though, something to this. There's also the NPC PC, too. Now, my husband's done that. He's actually ran a NPC as a party member. Yeah, well, and we are talking that, about party members. Right. Well, I mean, but it's not. It's still an NPC. Not adventure. Not Oh, oh, I get what you're saying. Okay. Uh, no, I see. Yeah. I mean, to me, unless, unless they have some big impact in, you know, as I said, like um, uh, exposition or thing, you know, helping them stay on track, just to have something that cards stuff around. Nah, I'm not really, to me, a henchman, but you said not a henchman, just a, a hireling. Just a hireling. A porter, a torchbearer, yeah, somebody it's to take like, care of the animals. It's like I don't really allow people leadership feats or whatever to have extra people. I just, you know, to me, to me, also to me, that would be somebody the party would hire, you know, more than I would throw in the game. But nah, I've never used them. I don't really have a desire to. Okay. David, but it would be, but you know what? That would be like a caravan master. You could do it if you wanted somebody to travel around, who maybe had a wealth of info. Sorry. No, no, maybe ahead. that. No, that that's a good point, David. What do you think? Uh, I used it with a caravan, like a uh, part of a campaign <laughs> that I had. Uh, the I had the players get hired out by <clears throat> this character who was like an artificer that created these incredible wagons, and they were delivering them from Waterdeep to Neverwinter, and that was the journey. And, and then with that, so you had them, they were the hire. Um, I mean, they, they were the people that hired them and they were part of that too. So they helped facilitate any needs or something like that, that came up. Uh, the second wagon was the food truck like thing that I had where I had Ramsey and Brigitte, you know, mm -hmm. they were, um, you know, they were chefs. Oh, and, and the, that would be cool. And the name of the wagon was the Hero's Feast. So they, they were there to prepare food for them oh. and stuff like that. So, so nice. yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, I'll admit, I, I will admit this, this, this did just pop to mind because I said, I've, this is, this is that other system that I play. And I've said, I'm playing in an, I'm playing Rosa in an all pirate game, but I come to think of it, it's not hirelings, but they are big. She's got a crew. And it's not just the PC. She's got a whole crew around her. And they are all like developed characters that they develop for the thing. So yeah, that that's actually, I think, that was actually a pretty effective way to do it. Um, and they're interesting characters. They, they did a great job of actually developing every single one with their own personality and their own traits. And then, and most of them 
are they're not adventurers, but what they do is um, in this game, you get imposition. So basically you can call on this crew member to add something to your dice roll, you know, or we do have one that's actually a cleric who will heal everybody. But uh, so, I mean, that's that's getting a little above and beyond what we're discussing here, but that's an interesting, another interesting way to do it though is have everybody, you know, one is like the little span girl. So she like cheers and somebody can get like a bonus to hit or get heroism or something like that. But uh, yeah, that's a whole bunch. It's that's, that's where actually this whole point is really done in an extreme and it's done really well. So, okay. Uh, a couple more minutes before we get to our NPCs. So we'll make this fast. Uh, Carol, uh, do you prepare? These uh, loser shitbag Joe shit the ragman NPCs, or do you uh, develop them on the fly? I mean, I get it. I try to develop them as much. I find a lot of times, even <laughs> when I'm playing, I find a lot of characters that develop on the fly. So, I mean, I basically I have a base backstory, or you know, at least a personality and what this person did does and the role of what what they're going to do in the campaign i'll have that in mind and i might develop them on the fly depending on their interactions with people you know oftentimes things will hit me as uh as we're playing you know oh you know and i'll sit i'll write backstories of characters i'll start with one this is even said by pcs i'll start with a backstory and then i find as i progress i'll add more to it based on the interactions I have in the game. Oh, wait, yeah, this, you know, and the questions people, actually a lot of it's the questions people will ask, you know, you're not gonna cover everything. You're not gonna develop the entire backstory of this character in one setting. I don't think you can. You know, people are gonna ask you questions that We're you're not gonna have in that piece in of paper. Three minutes. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I mean, that's that's a pretty bare bone, but that's still pretty bare bones. I mean, as I play and people ask me more questions, you watch, I might have to even do it in two or three minutes, think of stuff on the fly. Okay. But I mean, but also occasionally, you know, you'll you'll find that you you'll be you'll be doing something and then it just you'll need to come up with something on the fly because it works really well. Like you like, you know, the players will be. The players, the players will do, especially if you're running a sandbox game, the players may decide they want to go talk to somebody that you didn't even think about putting in the game, you know, so then you quickly got to create somebody to, for them to deal with. So sometimes you do have to do it on the fly. So it depends. Okay. You know. David, same question. Uh, I put thought, I put thought into them. Uh, as I'm creating and prepping for the campaign, like uh, for each leg or whatever like that. <laughs> so at the inception of the campaign and all that, uh, that's when I create these NPCs. And, um, you know, I, like, like I said, I use them as tools to help move the story forward or provide needs, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, needs, solve huh? problems. So. I was going right. to say needs, huh? That's what the brothel's for. Uh, clearly, you, it was a burlax show. <laughs> was, was. Clearly, in Phil Bar, I will pull shit out of thin air. That's yep. why there are so many Steves and Stevettes. <laughs> uh, I can tell. Um, <laughs> but uh, one tip I learned, and I, I hell, I don't even know when I learned it. Uh, probably off the internet uh, is if you're in need of a very specific NPC, like you can tell that the players are gonna hit this person up and do something. The best advice I ever saw was take somebody you had an interaction mm. with earlier, whether it be somebody at a gas station, somebody at the grocery, a coworker, a teacher from your past and develop them. So Igor Svensson is my high school social studies teacher who always talked like this with a locked jaw, Mr. Schmidt. Do you have an answer for me? Wow. Uh, and I found that that really helped. So Igor equals Mr. Leland. So uh, doing that not only allows you to come up with tics, uh, personality quirks, things of that nature, uh, but when you remember that, even if it's just somebody that was counting out pennies and dimes ahead of you, 
at least you have an idea of, okay, well, this person's heavy set, they're wearing uh, medieval sweatpants, and they're talking on their magic rock that sends messages. Uh, so you can really go ahead and fulfill your NPC character just by recalling those facts. Uh, it's better if you use somebody from your past because, you know, uh, we all had teachers for a year, maybe two years, maybe even longer than that. So uh, that, that's a pro tip right there. You know what? On that vein, if you've been playing a long time, like I have, and you have a million characters you've already created, bring one of them in. Mm -hmm. Use them as inspiration. You know, or maybe not even one of yours, maybe one of your fellow players, you know, one of the characters that you play sat at a table and you were one of the other characters. I've done that before. Head wound Larry is more than ready for anybody's campaign. <laughs> Okay, folks, like I said at the top of the hour, uh, I assigned these guys uh, to give me two NPCs, mostly in case we ran uh, short on time. That is not going to be the case. Nah. Uh, so uh, first NPC, uh, I'll ask very specific questions. You guys will answer them and then we'll move on. So Carol, uh, who's your, out of the two, pick one. Who's your NPC? I'm going to go with the fun one I did. Uh, God, let's see if I can say it. Julia McGee. She's a fishmonger. How old? What's she look like? Uh, definitely on the older side, probably in her 50s, late 50s, early 60s. What does she, you said, what does she look like? Mm -hmm. uh, she's does tall. she have a quirk? Well, let's start with She's tall, lanky, and dowdy, dowdy with a bit of a hook nose and straggly graying hair. Okay. Uh, she smells like fish. Based she on, always smells like fish. Based on somebody you know or just somebody you create? No, I just friggin' made it up. Okay. I think, Based. I think, I guess you could say I'm sitting here with uh, my Bridewind, my Bridewind box set. And I was thinking about it like, oh, there's a fishmonger in there. And uh, she'd probably be an interesting character. Okay. David, who you got for me? Uh, yes, uh, we'll go with the casino owner. It is a goblin. His name is uh, Phineas J. Oddfellow. So, what's he look like? What are his well, a very, very well dressed, very sophisticated goblin. He almost <laughs> doesn't look like a goblin. I mean, he, um, his backstory is, is he's full, and this is before the Verdan ever came out, uh, with Acquisitions Incorporated. He'd fooled around with, uh, he, he was a warlock and fooled around with uh, Eldritch magic so much that it started to distort his appearance. And he was looking more like a, a green halfling with big ears than anything else. So he had like slicked back ha black hair. He was just well dressed, you know, diamond rings and thing, all kinds of bling. And yeah. What's he smell like? I. Uh, Believe it or not, it smells like cloves. <laughs> so, okay, I'll buy that. Uh, yeah. And I, it, it, and it's more than pitching adventure scents. Uh, I think we can all agree that if you can get a scent or an aroma into something, uh, it will make the PC more memorable. Uh, I'm it gonna was roll just So uh, I rolled even. I'm going to go with Lydia Van Snoozel, a human. She is a cheap strumpet, and she's missing her front teeth. Uh, take that as you may. Uh, the most noticeable thing about her is she smells like powder, and she talks like the Queen of England. Hello, Anja. Pleasure to meet you. Sounds like Julia Child. <laughs> she kind of does. Yeah, so uh, that, that is Lydia Van Snoozel. Back uh -huh. to Anja, your fishmonger. Uh, what is she to the party? Is she window dressing? Is she some kind of beacon of knowledge? Oh, what, gosh. What is, what is her reason to etra? Window, window dressing would be hilarious. Uh, no, she's definitely not window dressing. Uh, no, she is. Uh, no, she's uh, She's basically someone that a lot of the fishermen come and talk to. She is, in spite of her, you know, maybe somewhat scary appearance, she is very friendly and jovial and she's got a really infectious laugh and she loves to chat with people 
So she's so basically a wealth of knowledge uh, from what the fishermen bring, you know, when they bring her the fish, they also stop and chat with her about various things. Nice. David? Tell us uh, more about the goblin. All right. Uh, what would you like to know about the goblin? Just what, uh, what is what is his uh, connection to the PCs? Uh, his connection to the PCs is that uh, like I said, he was their their fix for their <coughs> vices. <laughs> so uh, basically what we had is we uh, we were running the Underdark out of the this campaign and Gontelgrim, the city, uh, Dwarven City, we resettled it and that's where the casino was built. So right. anyway, on their downtime and stuff like that, they all hung out at the casino and he provided, like I said, information and goods and services, <laughs> so. Nice. Uh, Lydia Van Snoozel, uh, <laughs> she being a cheap strumpet is privy to a lot of information uh, from a variety of her clientele. Uh, most of her uh, information is good. Uh, unlike my other NPC who was kind of dicey at best. Uh, Lydia, one of the other things about Lydia is she is the equivalent of a badge bunny, i.e. she services the local gendarme. Oh, good God. Hence, she is a protected individual. You fuck with Lydia, the city guard comes down on you like you ain't seen. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is she wears a, wee, a wig and she's heterochromatic. One blue eye, one green eye. So she is indeed oh, a very uh, memorable character. Uh, so she is the purveyor of knowledge, i.e. the font of information. Uh, Carol, uh, as we run low on time. Uh, what do you want to... Is yours uh, reoccurring? Does, she, oh, does like, the fishmonger frequently appear, or is she just kind of a as needed? Hmm. I <clears> could <throat> see, you know what? She seems like she'd be a lot of fun to play. So I kind of would hope. It depends on what the, once again, a lot of is what are the PCs going to do? Are they going to ever go back? You know, you know, they may just. They may just never go see her again. But uh, no, this one, actually, I, I think I'd like to have her be somebody that's recurring. I think she'd be a lot of fun for me to play, too. You know, I, the you, DMs you know, have to have fun, too. Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, especially for a seagoing campaign, she could be very yeah. useful because she knows Captain Ahab. She knows Captain Blackbird. She knows Terry the Gunner. Uh, I, I think that one could be really fleshed out nicely. I did uh, make her friendly so that the PCs would want to go back and see her. Not as friendly as Lydia Von Snoozel. Uh, <laughs> David, you've already alluded to the fact that uh, he's a reoccurring character. Go ahead and expound on that. Uh, like I said, he's a reoccurring character. Uh, I even had him one adventure. He actually was their rescue. So, uh, sure. yeah, they had gotten in pretty, pretty bad. We were running low on time on, on our play session. It was just like, okay, somebody shows up. And of course, with him being a warlock, you know, mask of many faces, you know, came in under the guise of somebody else and rescued him. So nice. no, that, that'll work. Yeah. Uh, I envision Lydia Von Snoozel as a common reoccurring character uh because we all know how i do my russian voices but the queen of england is far easier for me to perform uh i can see her as being always in the wrong place always at the right time uh we've got about five minutes to go so you know what fuck it uh each each one of you go ahead and tell me about NPC number two, Carol, hit us. All right, so I stole one of the ones I gave Kyle for cred to use as body parts. Uh, so I have Talicia Botticini, who is, well, at this point, she's a struggling artist who has created this brand new style of art called Har the Harlequin style. 
but in this world it has yet to ca- catch on. She, do you want me to just give the whole description? Mm-hmm. She's about uh, six feet tall with purple colored dyed hair, because of course purple, and green eyes, and she's an elf. Uh, she is, oh, I didn't think of which type. She's a high elf. Uh, and she's, yeah, she's, high elf. she's high elf. <laughs> yeah, she's such a high elf because no oh god shut up kyle <laughs> he said he said struggling because she only has one arm no um, no 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 no. oh yeah because her arm is in hey, the- hey fuck kyle he could have been on this show he's not go ahead and finish. Yeah. He's, he's like that yeah, no it's, that was just funny he's um be sick anyway that's like chris elliott's uh so scary um, movie the one shit, short i thought i wrote more than this i thought i wrote more than this um it's a mashed potato story oh yeah yeah so because but because this art style is yet to catch on she actually has to do you know she actually has to work so but she does she makes money you know doing portraits or you know work for people but she oh, also God. works for the local law. this is funny because of what you said she works for the local law enforcement making wanted poster sketches there you go. So she's a, I like that thought of that they protect her. Mm-hmm. So you got to have protection in this world, especially if you're female. Uh, yay or nay on reoccurring? Uh, maybe, but nah, I, I, probably not. Just an interesting side. Just an piece. interesting plot piece. I mean, she does, you know, of course, because she does have some insider uh, knowledge of the bad guys and such that she draws. She could be a source of information, though. She could be. And she mythos. could, you're right. She could be recurring because, you know, we could do a whole thing where uh, basically it could be like CSI Philbar. There you and, go. And they could keep coming back to her. Cool. David, second PC or NPC, what you got? Like you said, protection, crusher block, crusher block. Yep. Nice. He's Phineas's bouncer and bodyguard. So. He is a uh, he's very large uh, orc, but kind of looks more half orc. So he's like probably, you know, had a half orc, you know, <laughs> parent and a full orc, orc, other parent. So anyway, he's big, he's bad, he's mean. <laughs> he's uh, he's tall guy, Brown. Mus- muscular, muscular hey, build. Clubber Lang. Uh, dressed well because I mean you know it's the casino so he's You're well dressed. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be classic. His tusks are adamantine. Uh, I got I got the I I was inspired by um, Jaws from James Bond. Mm-hmm. Well, so yeah, his tusks are adamantine uh, with a golden. I mean, with a diamond stud in one of them. So, so he's an NBA player. Yeah, pretty much. He's got a growl. <laughs> I, I, I assume he is reoccurring. He is reoccurring. He's also hired. He's a hireling sometimes as muscle for the party. So <laughs> nice. Uh, the other one I came up with is Seamus O'Shea, a half orc. Uh, he is a one armed <laughs> bar fighter. Oh, good lord! What's it with the one arms tonight? You know what? I wrote this earlier, so yeah, that's you know, so much. Well, I said I know that was a cred reference because her arm was used for the oh, for the I know, that's where that came from. This, this one, I just figured, uh, give him something. He talks with a stutter and a hiccup, uh, kind of like a drunk stutter almost. Uh, and he is never without a flask, it's not always the same one, but he will. <laughs> He will tip it and then shake it and then throw it away and then get a, get a new one. Uh, oh my God, that, that's that great. Is thing. Uh, he is that's the great. brother of the tax collector. Protected NPC. Do not fuck with him or the law will run your ass down. Uh, he is the purveyor of the rumor mill because he hears a lot of things, but it's always like Chinese telephones. You didn't hear it right, and so you have to take it with a grain of salt. Every once in a while, he gets it right. Uh, he's about 5'7 and 140, because anybody in the police world knows that 5'7 and 140 fights until they are done. Uh, and he has an inverted mohawk for a hairstyle because he lost a bet, and he is always sporting at least one black eye because he is a fighter, but he ain't a good one. 
Uh, wow, Seamus I mean, Seamus and um, and your bouncer are probably get along good, or they uh-huh. fight. Well, folks, uh, that, that is how we create NPCs. Hopefully, yeah. you've picked up a few pieces of cool information. Hopefully, you can use them uh, in your own campaign or your own game. Uh, remember, if you want to be on this show, hit us up, mhobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. Uh, don't forget, we've got shit for sale. Uh, if you want custom dice, hit up at Pirate Dog Dice. If you want to add aroma to your game, try Adventure Sense from oddfishgames.com. And if you want to learn to write better, check out their Shine System coming soon. Shine System slash RPG. Uh, folks, that is it for Between the Rolls. We appreciate you coming by. Thursday is Cacophony, and the weekend we're taking off. So uh, Cacophony is the next game. Uh, see what David and Carrie have in store in Nathan. Nathan. Maybe um, we it. shall see and see if they uh, find Rosa. <laughs> yeah, they got they got like a month that they're stuck here before they can do it. No, like I mean Carmen no, I mean I'm not. Where I the hell is Rosa? <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean them. I meant uh, the this uh, the order of pick. <laughs> see if they uh, find Rosa. I think, I think the party finds Rosa before pick does. Uh, uh, folks, that would that is it. Let's give them the big kiss and wave. Mwah. Bye, everybody. <laughs>